Hello folks and welcome to Cisco Baltic Edition and today's special focusing on Cisco Jabber for mobile devices. And with me today I have Mr. Timo Jolkin. Timo, do you want to say hi? Hi, nice to be back. Fantastic. And before we get started, and um, let me show you what devices we have on the table because we're going to play around with them. We have an I Apple iPad, uh, just standard out of the box. We have a Samsung smart device. It's, uh, it's a Galaxy Note 2. We have um, a Samsung tablet here, over here a Windows PC, an Apple iPhone, and a Mac computer over here. And with this, we're going to show you different scenarios. In fact, we've designed five different scenarios for you. We're going to show you how you can use Cisco Jabra Mobile for instant messaging and presence on any of these devices. We're going to show you how you can make regular audio calls, video calls. We're going to show you video conferencing. Um, and we're going to show you how you can call telepresence room devices and how this fits together. Um, and at the very end, we're going to take a look at what components, licenses, and hardware you need to enable this. So, Timo, with that, I think we should get going. Yeah. So, folks, Cisco Jabber for mobile devices. Now, before we get started, there are three ways you can use Cisco Jabber. You can have it on your mobile device, your smartphone, you can have it on your tablet, or you can have it on, on a PC or on a Mac computer. Um, I would argue that let's take a look at what they actually look like and let's start with the, the iPhone look and feel. Yep. And uh, here in the background we can see the iPhone which is projected right on the screen here. Yeah, sure. So this is my iPhone. I have the Jabber icon here, so let's load it up. So this is what Jabber looks on an iPhone. I mean, I have the contacts here. Um, scrolling to the left, sorry, to the right, shows me all the rest of the things that I can, uh, I can do with my Jabber. Um, and let's let's take a then look at the iPad. Sure. And this is the iPad, and I can launch up Jabber by clicking the icon here. Wow, it's much richer. Yeah. So it, you know, it's a bigger screen. It's the same application. It just has more stuff uh, visible at the same time. Cool. And then your computer. Yeah. And this is the Jabber running on the Mac. Looks pretty much the same as on the other devices. It does, and folks, um, Jabber you know, works just as well on, on Android devices and Windows PC computers as well. That is true. Cool. Now, we're here to talk about Jabber um, for mobile devices, and I think the easiest way of using it is, is by chatting. Yeah. Uh, do you want to show how that would work? Yeah. Let's uh, take my iPhone on the screen. Sure. So this is how Jabber looks on my iPhone. Um, and I have the contacts here, uh, and I can start chatting with people here. On the contacts, I can, of course, see the presence information. I see if they're available offline, busy in a meeting, presenting, so I know how to interact with them. And I can see you, for example, you're available, so uh, let's take a chat here. So I t take up your contact card by clicking on your name. I, can, I, I could start calling with you, but let's first focus on the chat features. So I'll just uh, send a short, short hi message to you. Fantastic. And I get the uh, the high message, and the only thing I need to do is to respond to it. Yeah. So fairly simple. We see the contact cards. We see photos of people chatting, the timestamps, everything that we want. Um, so chatting is good. Usually, what I use chatting for is just to ask, "Are you available? Can I call you?" So then, when I want to call you, I don't need to dig up your information anywhere. I just hit the call button on the same chat window, and. It asks if I want to call your mobile number or your enterprise number or CPU URI, so let's call the CPU URI. Cool. And on my side, I can see Timo's calling me, and the only thing I need to do is to answer the phone. Now, this is the user interface that you would have on your phone, um, you know, be it a, an iPhone or Android device. And uh, what you actually can see here is you can see whom you're calling, you can see the call length, and there are a couple of other things you can do. You have full PBX mid-call features, the kind of features you would be familiar with uh, by using an advanced telephony system. Um, and you can access them by hitting the more button over here. Yeah. And there are four things you can do. You can hold the call. Let's talk about that in a minute. You can transfer the call. Let's talk about that as well in a minute. You can conference uh, more people in and you can move the call to your GSM mobile. Um, but let's start with the hold. Yeah. Thing. What can you do by holding the call? So hold is actually key to all of these features, but uh, specifically by just putting the call on hold, uh, hold allows me to pick the call up to my all other devices. So when I put this call on hold here, it Im immediately appears to all my three devices here. So when you put it on call, 
um, if you have Jabber installed on your, your PC, on your tablet, it will announce that the call is on hold. Do you want to pick it up on one of these devices? Exactly. So let's take a look. I'll put it on hold here on my iPhone. And then I can see the call appearing on my iPad. So I can, I can see that I have a call with Rasmus here on hold. And then I try to uh, hit, the, hit the red uh, bar here and I can uh, resume the call if I wish. So let's just hit resume here and the same call appears on my iPad. So now we have the same call here, same features, and uh, I can put the call on hold again if I want to, for example, move it to my computer. Let's do that. So I'm putting put it on hold, hold here, and now we can see how the call appeared on my Mac. So I can do the same thing here. I can just uh, resume the call on the Mac, um, and then the call is from your Android device being jumping back and forth, all my, all my uh, jabbers here, and uh, now, now I have it on the Mac. So guys, this is really flexible if you are in a scenario where you're driving a car, you pick up the phone, uh, and then you start chatting, um, you, you stop, um, you might have a 3G or LTE connection, you can continue the call using your tablet if you want to, and when you get back into the office, you can continue, carry on the call uh, on, your, on your PC, on your Mac. So this is really, really good. Um, but let's explore more things. Uh, let's uh, explore the, the transfer thing. Yeah. So let's, uh, I'll pick up the call again from my iPad. So now, we, now we, when we have the call back to the iPad, I can hit the more button and, for example, transfer the call to uh, somebody else. Sure. So we can make the transfer to an internal user or to an external user. So when we hit the transfer, we get the search field here where we can add, add the number or search for somebody in the address book. Cool. So we could actually transfer it to Patrick, he's offline, so we need to transfer it to his mobile. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Yeah, so what we do here is when we hit, hit the number here, the ongoing call will go on hold and we will do a consultative call to Patrick. We're just not b blindly throwing the call to him, we are, uh, we are just uh, launching a call between me and Patrick's mobile. So let's hope he's picking it up some, somewhere wherever he, he happens to be. Hello, Patrick. So we, we have Patrick here on the mobile. Um, is it okay if I transfer the call to Rasmus? Yeah, that's fine. I was waiting for uh, him to call me. Great. So I'll just hit the transfer button here, and it's immediately transferred to, uh, to Rasmus's uh, mobile. Cool. Hey, Patrick. How are you? Good, good, good. So thanks, Patrick. Um, I think um, we should just drop this call and I can uh, let you carry on with the stuff you're doing. So thanks very much. See you. Bye-bye. Okay. See you too. Bye. So that was transfer. Yeah. So um, let's take a look at um, other features. Let's, let's take a call back up. So if you call me. Sure, I'll do that. So I have the call ringing on all my devices. I'm picking it up on the iPad. And then we have the ongoing call here. So we took a look at hold and transfer, um, but I'd like to see you actually. Sure. So what we have here is just a zip call. It's a standard zip call, so we can of course add video as well to it. So you can see my video is, uh, is uh, disabled here, so I can just hit the video button and it opens the camera on my iPad. Rasmus does the same, it opens the camera on his uh, Samsung device. And then we have a live video call between these users. We can, of course, choose which camera we are using, the back or the front cameras on these devices. Um, and as we discussed about these advanced PBX features, sure. we have all the same features available here. Oh, yeah? So if I take a look at the More button, I, I have all the same holds and transfers and conferences here available. I don't think we need to look at the hold again or the transfer because it's similar to what we did with the audio only call. Yeah, and I think the bottom line here is, is we, we started off with a chat, we escalated into an audio call, and now we are in a video call, right? Yeah. Uh, and you can move the video call from any device back and forth as yeah. much as you like. Yeah, that is true. But what if you wanted to add a third person to the call? Yeah. What would you do? So let's take a look at the conference button here. Sure. So when I hit the conference, I get a similar um, search function here. And I can start adding people to this call that we have between two mobile devices. Sure. So let's, for example, add a telepresence room to this. Okay. So it's not a chapter user, it's a telepresence room that we have here in the building. So I'll just hit on the address of that room and we will get a, a direct call between, from my mobile device to that meeting room. So it's actually in our lobby there 
Uh, it's a Cisco telepresence device. And now we have a call between my iPad and the telepresence room, and we can see that you were put on hold because we have another call here. Sure. And then now that I want to put them into the same call, I have a merge button here. And by hitting that, the backend system that we have, the Cisco Unified Communication Manager, takes the conferencing resources, puts all these calls to that same call, and then we have a multi-party conference here. Now, this is really, really cool because it means that two people who are mobile are not stranded. They're not sitting there in their own silo, uh, but they can add rooms to yep. it. And of course, exactly. it works the other way around as well. Yeah. Now, three three persons are really great to have, but yes. what if you just wanted to keep on adding people into the call? <laughs> what do you need to do? Yeah, sure. So, uh, as I said, as I mentioned, the, all the calls are hosted on the central resources, so all the participants in this call can add more people to it. Okay. So let's take, for example, a use case where you will get a call from somebody external while you are in this conference. Okay. So I have a user here using a Samsung tablet um, running Jabber, and I want to call Rasmus here. So I'm making a call to Rasmus from, uh, from my tablet device. Yeah, and the only thing I really need to do at this point is just to answer the call. Um, and here in my Jabber mobile client, I have the all familiar more button. And the only thing I need to do is I need to hit it and then merge the call. And what's going to happen there in the background is the, the person who called me is now going to be transferred or conferenced in into the video conferencing there, which is happening in the background. Um, and now we're going to have a lot of people here. And Timo, are there any limitations to how far you can go here? Well, yeah, of course there are limitations, but it's more a matter of how many conferencing resources you have behind the CUC. Yeah. So, so it is a question of just enabling people. It, there are no sort of technical resources, it's just a, a question of how much you want to enable. Yeah. Cool. Now, guys, we walked you through five different scenarios. Instant messaging and presence, audio calling, video calling, video conferencing, and also adding telepresence room into a video conferencing, which is sort of taking place here on your mobile devices. Now, Timo, what do you actually need there in the background to enable all yeah. this? So on the background, we, of course, have the CUCM, the Cisco Unified Communications Manager, which is the heart to all this. So sure. all the devices, the applications are registered to the CUCM. Um, and there, there are basic functionalities on the CUCM. Like I am a presence, it's available for all users on any device they want to have. Completely free of charge. Yeah, so it's bundled into the CUCM. Uh, you don't need to buy personal licenses to this and this many users. So you can have, for example, let's say 1,000 users, and everybody can use IAM presence on all their devices at the same time. Cool. And if I wanted to have richer features, um, I, I don't want to, for example, give it out to everyone in the, uh, in the company. Let's just say 10% need to have richer features on their mobile phones. Yeah. So then you would just buy, for the 100 users, uh, the licenses that enable calling either on a single device or on multiple devices. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. Folks, this is actually this simple. You only pay for the licenses you need. So if you have, uh, for example, a thousand users out there and they need instant messaging and presence for, your mo for, for the mobile phones or the tablets, you got it. And if you wanted to have richer features for just a few people in the company, we will enable you to just get the licenses for those people. And you pay only for the licenses you need. I think that pretty much sums up what uh, Jabber Mobile is. Uh, it is a rich communications tool. It works on any device and it's super flexible, uh, both in terms of functionalities, but also in terms of licenses. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos from Cisco Baltic Edition. Thank you.